Let me bring in special report host Brett Baer. Um, I, I'm sure there are going to be people who are saying that, that I'm, I'm genuflecting in some way, shape, or form. But I, I got to tell you, I have watched Republicans uh, over the years disrespect union workers. This is a completely different feel. And if I'm a union worker, I'm looking at this, Brett, and I am saying, boy, I, I feel a lot better today. Which is why, Liz, a lot of union workers voted for Donald Trump. Uh, and that was contrary to where their unions, you know, said that they should vote. Uh, that last person speaking, Doug McCarran with the United Brotherhood of Carpenters, uh, saying that the inauguration speech really touched his team, really touched workers in his union, really touched the middle class, saying that Washington has always been the beneficiary and the little guy gets the short end of the stick. Um, so that goes to uh, the people that, you know, Donald Trump and his people who said that this speech was meant for them. Uh, not for Washington. And while liberal and establishment heads are exploding, Liz, still today, uh, I think that you're seeing this outreach happening to people across the country. Do you think that anyone, whether union or CEO, thought that on day one Donald Trump would amass a bunch of union guys in, in the White House and say, you're welcome here, and then he got the applause? I don't know if we can reshow that, but we should re-rack it because the minute he said, all right, we, we've nixed TPP, or at least the United States involvement in the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which was the U.S. and 11 other countries, many of them Pacific Rim, uh, th these guys broke out into applause. Yeah, and because they feel like they've been on the back end of trade deals, period, uh, that you saw the first question that was asked is when or will you renegotiate NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, mm -hmm. and he said at the appropriate time. Uh, we understand that to be pretty soon as he meets with Canada and Mexico, and uh, if that happens, that's a major mm -hmm. shift. Uh, obviously, there are lawmakers, Republicans and Democrats, who warn uh, about closing off, but I think there are people saying that this is a fair trade and not free trade who support Donald Trump. Okay, let me just quickly ask about Mike Pompeo, because one thing Donald Trump hasn't been able to get applause for at the moment, or at least agreement on, is confirmation on Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and the CIA uh, nominee Mike Pompeo. Right now, the Senate Intelligence Committee is uh, working to vet him, and we're expecting something later today. Brett, will he get confirmed? There's a little bit of controversy. He had said he would uh, consult with experts on the efficacy of torture or for specifically waterboarding, things like that, mass surveillance. That, that got some people's concerns elevated. Yeah, he, he'll get through. And uh, so will Rex, Rex Tillerson. The biggest hurdle for uh, the Secretary of State nominee were Republicans. Marco Rubio, John McCain, Lindsey Graham all have said they will now vote for him. And the reason all of these nominees will get through barring some unforeseen circumstance that we, we haven't seen yet, is because of Democrats who changed the rules in 2013 and made it 50 plus one to approve cabinet nominees, uh, not 60 votes as it used to be, uh, like it is for mm -hmm. Supreme Court justices. Well, it does, it does come back to bite you in certain, in certain ways. Let me, let me quickly ask about somebody who was confirmed, the National Security Advisor General Michael Flynn. Uh, have you and your reporting indicated that there is some type of investigation into certain telephone calls he made in December with Russia's ambassador to the U.S., specifically at a time when uh, there had been announced sanctions for Russia getting inserting itself in, in our election process by hacking? Yes. The administration is downplaying that particular call, uh, but there is an investigation, and we don't know the extent of it, uh, into Mike Flynn's ties uh, to Russia. And I think that is going to get uh, moved forward. I think that uh, Sean Spicer was asked about it at the briefing today. He didn't illuminate too much, mm -hmm. uh, but I, it's not the end of that we'll hear of this uh, of this probe. Oh, Brett, in the end, though, on this first day, I, I looked at this, I said to my team, let's call this day one deals, because there have been so many deals discussed, signed. Uh, we still, as, as a business network, are waiting to see the reaction in the markets right now, and there is a little bit of indecisiveness at the moment. The Dow is down about 25 points. But remember, on, on Inauguration Day, the Dow is up more than 90 points. But uh, the reality of these coming to fruition, the gelling of them, we're not sure yet which of these plans comes to pass, but the fact that he's in there, you know, you've covered many a presidency. Have you ever seen anything like this one? 
No, and he's signaled that there's much more to come in a very short order on uh, taxes, on more regulations, on things that will increase the ability of companies to create jobs in the U.S. So uh, I think the, the good bet, and I'm not advising, but the good bet is pro-growth, at least for the short term. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we just got this flash. Uh, the Fox News is reporting that the Pompeo vote will come around 7 p.m., and they have just begun debating his his candidacy, and we'll see, not quite debating, sorry, discussing. Two different words, debating and discussing, but each step of the way we're going to keep people focused. Brett, thank you very much. All right, Liz, thanks. Anytime. Brett Baer, special report each night, 6 p.m. Eastern on the Fox News Channel.